Come with me, my pretties. We are going on a journey to find all of the horror. Or some of the horror, or you know, any horror, it turns out. Any horror at all, please? Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would switch gears a little bit and I would recount for you a little journey that I recently had to find some books specifically for a vlog. In this video you will find some very familiar faces. It was all hands to the pump to find appropriate books for this vlog, let me tell you. And after we journey forth through the bookshops of Edinburgh, I will show you some of the other books that I have been collecting on my desk for, you know, the past little while. So it's part quest, part book haul, part me ramble. But before I get into the- um, <clears throat> wow. <coughs> If there was ever a cue to drink water, it was choking on your own words. Before we get into today's antics, and that uh, it's definitely fair to call them antics, I would first like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Ana Luisa. And as with some of the familiar faces that I mentioned earlier, I know you guys know that Ana Luisa is no stranger to my channel. I am fortunate enough to be one of their brand ambassadors and to be able to bring you all of their shiny goodness. In case you haven't heard about Ana Luisa before, they are a luxury jewellery brand that makes some absolutely beautiful signature pieces for you to add to your collection. Pieces that just effortlessly bring your aesthetic together and if you're anything like me, make me look far Far more put together than I usually am in the moment. And of course the most wonderful thing about Anna Louisa, one of the things that I will just not stop banging on about is that they are completely carbon neutral. Anna Louisa is to the planet like Carmen Sandiego is to all of us in the 90s. We cannot see her. Their carbon footprint is roughly at zero because they offset all of their emissions and all of the materials that they use are recycled. Which just... Mm, makes me feel even better every time I reach for my jewellery box. Today I am wearing their absolutely stunning Mish necklace. It couples this beautiful unique chain with this gorgeous green aventurine stone and if you are a crystal girly like me you know that aventurine is good for persistence and perseverance and I am pairing it with their lovely matching baden ring with this split band which I have had so many compliments about already. And as you guys will see from this video I have not taken taken this necklace or this ring off since I got them. I feel like every time I get a new Ana Luisa piece it stays around for at least a couple of months on solo use. And it turns out it's not just me that feels this way about Ana Luisa. If you keep your eyes peeled later on in this video you will see some more Ana Luisa in the wild. Right now Ana Luisa are running the second of their massive summer sales. It runs from the 1st to the 26th of August and if you click my link down in the description below you will not only get yourself a cheeky little discount but you will help to support my channel in more videos just like this. Plus, like, how do you resist all the compliments like Eddie Munson said? Flattery works on me. So let's get started on our bear hunt, shall we? I mean, book hunt. And the only thing we hunt bears for here is hugs. So as I said earlier, I was in the market for some very specific types of books on this book hunt. And I admit I had one title in mind, but apart from that, I was open to the possibilities. So this trip, like so many trips, started in the basement of Blackwells, where not only the children's books live, but so do the board games. And it turns out, so do all of the jelly cat toys. And I don't know if you guys are anything like us, but we do spend an inordinately long time petting jelly cats and then guessing their exorbitant price. Unless of course you are my little pal Patrick here which Jill lovingly got me for my birthday. Do not ask how expensive Patrick is because of course the answer is priceless. Such a cute little Patrick. Okay, down you go. But while our quest was predominantly for horror books on this trip, there was, if you will, a tiny little side quest. And that was to find a copy of Jean's brand new book Egyptian Myths out in the wild, which as you can see here, I did. Although we did spend quite a long amount of time here looking all of Katie Ponder's absolutely amazing illustrations and finding Jean's favourite one. This is it, by the way, just in case you were wondering. This is Jean's second foray into bringing the mythology that we know and love to a younger audience. We of course started out with the stunning Greek myths and now we have added Egypt 
to that library. This is another volume which mixes stories with these gorgeous pictographs. There are tons of different sections to introduce you to all the different parts of Egyptian mythology and I don't know about you guys but I don't know an awful lot about Egyptian mythology and I don't see a lot of books on it out there either. And while these books are definitely marketed towards children, I still as an adult get a lot out of them. And so there it was in all of its foiled glory in my hands and it was time to go looking for more horrory things. Except inevitably those horrory things first started in the board game department. And no, when I say horror, I don't mean Harry being forced to walk around bookshops the entire day even though he only reads audiobooks. But like the true bookworms that we are, Jean still managed to find a book related board game. Board games out of the way and having been joined by a wild Jill, it was time to truly get into the book hunting in earnest. So onwards we went to the wonderfully inviting wall of three for twos in Blackwell where I am frequently surprised by titles that I didn't know existed. But while I was browsing the three for two shelves I was summoned by a squawk of my name over to the other side of the shop where Jean was very excitedly pointing out one of my most anticipated releases and it was then my friends that I realised she really is genius because this particular book is not only one of my most anticipated releases and clearly also Jean's because as you can see she picked it up here but it is also perfect, perfect for this vlog. This is The Daughter of Dr Moreau by Sylvia Morena Garcia, the author of, of course, Mexican Gothic. And this is a retelling of The Island of Dr Moreau, which is a horror slash science fiction thriller, which is very much a classic, but also very much a male centric tale. So in case you have never heard of The Island of Dr Moreau, it was a novel written by H.G. Wells who of course wrote The War of the Worlds which is probably his most famous work and it focused on a shipwrecked man which as we know from previous Leanne rants on this channel is not one of my favourite literary vehicles in the classics canon but Hey ho! We have a shipwrecked dude who ends up on an island which he finds to be largely uninhabited except for a very weird laboratory which is run by Dr Moreau who is a mad scientist who is making human-animal hybrids. But also as per some of Leanne's happy rants on this channel there have been more and more feminist retellings of classics like this recently and of course case in point I would be remiss in not mentioning the strange case of the alchemist daughter which brings together all of the tales from this genre like Frankenstein and Dracula and even Sherlock Holmes and mashes them all together from a female perspective or in this case many female perspectives and so when it was announced that Sylvia Marina Garcia was writing this I went into a small puddle. We are Sylvia Marina Garcia stands on this channel and uh, this is beautiful. So in this version we are following Carlotta Moreau who is in this case the only daughter of Dr Moreau, the mad scientist who creates these hybrids. We are also following an overseer from his laboratory who helps him to make these hybrids and then we are following some perspectives from the hybrids themselves. Slurp says all of them are living in a perfectly balanced and static world which is jolted by the abrupt arrival of Eduardo Lazalde, the charming and careless son of Dr Moreau's patron who will unwittingly begin a dangerous chain reaction. For Moreau keeps secrets, Carlotta has questions and in the sweltering heat of the jungle passions may ignite. And honestly I couldn't think of a more perfect book for this vlog than this one. Unethical people hybrids hidden labs. I mean it was like it was meant to happen. So after this very early win in our trip I was extremely excited. I was hopeful. I was perhaps a little bit overconfident and I took myself to the sci-fi and fantasy selection which Blackwells has a lot of. Like they have an entire massive wall dedicated to their sci-fi and fantasy shelves. So first I perused that section to see if there was any like fantasy with one foot in horror but unfortunately I was unsuccessful in finding anything new or anything that didn't include a plague. Like it's not the time guys, it's not the time. And so I took myself over to their slightly smaller but still quite extensive 
horror section to see if there was anything that I hadn't already spotted in there in a previous trip and uh, there was not. There, there was really not. And I will say at this point in this video that I am very picky when it comes to my horror books, but I am in a place with my horror reading where I predominantly only want to pick up horror books from women. And that is a little bit more difficult because although a lot more women's voices are coming through in the genre, there is certainly still a sort of like 70-30 split towards male voices. And I was starting to get a little bit like, mm, okay maybe I was a little bit too quick to get excited in here maybe my earlier win had just like inflated my brain but then I turned around and spotted this baby. This is of course Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson which is a huge release. Everybody is talking about it right now. I don't think I have seen a single one of my favourite channels that deals with like horror or sci-fi or fantasy not mention this one. You guys know that the hype train for me doesn't really work the same as it does for a lot of people. Lots of people get like really really excited to join in that like reading bandwagon and I'm just like you're okay. I, I'll I'll be over there with my, with my backlist titles. When this is five years old, then maybe, maybe I'll read it. And that doesn't happen for every book I have read, especially in the last couple of years, more and more new release titles as they come out and have joined in with the hype. I've had a bit of a hype revolution, but sometimes it's still, ooh, it's still too much. And for this one, it had been very much too much. And so I hadn't even like picked it up to really read the blurb or anything. But once it was in my hands, I realized how very perfect it was for me. This one follows four best friends who have been best friends since they were very very young because this is actually an adult release from Juno Dawson. I don't know if I mentioned that of course Juno Dawson famously does a lot of queer YA but this is a thoroughly thoroughly adult read. And at the beginning of this novel these four friends get sworn into the coven. They are officially coven members in all of their beautiful draped black velvet robe glory but it is only 25 years later as adults that they realise exactly how weighty those beautiful black velvet capes really are because as members of Her Majesty's Royal Coven they are sworn to protect the crown but while they are fabulous at dealing with threats outside of the coven when a prophecy comes from within it that promises to bring it down they don't really know what to do. And realistically, 25 years is a long time for four people to stay friends and they have a lot of differences in their lives now that they are going to have to first overcome before they deal with any kind of threat. Complicated sister relationships, friendships that blur the line and chosen family are some of my favourite things to read ever in any genre and so when I found that they were all in the same place, I picks it up. And to be perfectly fair, secret societies and people who protect somebody very special was um, was perfect for this vlog. So I walked out of Blackwells with both of these books, a very contented little bean, and into this absolutely wonderful lunch with all of my chosen family who I haven't seen for ages and it was just very emotional and we had a lot of fun and I loved it. Satiated as we were, we then took ourselves for a wonder to look at some pretty things in between the books, let's be perfectly honest. And as promised, here is Jean and I both sporting Anna Louisa jewellery spontaneously because neither of us actually take it off. But unfortunately, as Jean had been sequestered finishing her PhD and I had been holed up in my library finishing everything I need for my shop lunch, both of us had kind of forgotten that it was fringe time in Edinburgh, which is just exceedingly busy. The population like triples. There are just too many people, too many people and too many pepperoni risks and we promptly ran like hell away and took ourselves to Waterstones. Waterstones in Princess Street in Edinburgh is three floors and a basement so it is almost never too jammed and sure enough it was late enough in the day that we actually had quite a nice browsing experience. We did initially of course take ourselves on a journey to find more copies of Egyptian Mist but Waterstones are unfortunately having some warehouse issues right now which I will discuss later on in this video because it denied me one of my other most anticipated releases for quite a long time and I'm kind of traumatised Waterstones not gonna lie I'm kind of kind of traumatised. Dunn broke my trust a little bit with this pre-order. So when no copies of Egyptian Mist could be found I ran over to the horror section only to discover with further horror, no pun 
intended that it looked like this. It's already a critically small selection because Waterstones, for whatever reason, don't actually carry ever that many horror books in any of their stores, which I just think is a bit weird. However, as you can see, because of the warehouse issues, they couldn't restock the shelves and so it was just dead and not in like the fun undead or supernatural way it was just it was just it was just empty which not gonna lie was a cause for great disappointment because i thought i might find at least one thing maybe just just one thing in waterstones but to know. So in my complete huff at their lack of appropriate fiction selections I took myself down to the basement to look at some German grammar books because uh, you bitch is learning again after many many years of a break and uh, I was I was wanting to add to my current <coughs> hyperfixation stack of German vocabulary books. <laughs> But a uh, further disappointment awaited me, my friends, because there was not only nothing there that I hadn't already seen, but the section was once again tiny. So uh, in our hot and sweaty saltiness, because Jean was also thwarted looking for some mythology books that she wanted, we took our hot and sweaty urses up to the top floor and we had a lovely little sit down break with cake and ice water and with Chris with his chamomile tea because he is an on-brand adorable boy. And thus once again rejuvenated, we took ourselves downstairs to brave the main floor. As you can see from this shot, the bottom floor in this Waterstones is huge. It's massive and not only does it have all of like their buy one get one half price tables but also has all of their brand new fiction on the wall and it has a lot of like their niche travel books because of course there's a lot of tourists coming to Edinburgh. But as it turned out Waterstones was about to redeem itself because I needed just one, one more book for this vlog and I wanted it to be something that was leaning from horror into thriller. So I took myself over to the thriller tables hoping that there again would be something there that I hadn't seen before and there was. And that book is Total Among the Murderers by Sally G. Morgan. This is perfect for a lot of reasons but one of those reasons is it is actually historical. This is set in Leeds in the 1970s and this one follows Jude who covets a very uncomplicated life with very few ties which again she does a lot of hitchhiking up and down the country, not staying in one place for very long and letting off a lot of steam, doing a lot of flirting, having a lot of fun and trying not to focus too much on how badly the relationship that she is having with a married woman is going. And it is partially due to the distractions of that relationship that Jude doesn't pay that much attention to the next car that she hitchhikes in. She is picked up by a middle-aged married couple who seem very normal at first but then things take a very sinister turn because in Jude's carefree life she doesn't watch the news and so she doesn't know that girls like her have been going missing up and down the country. But the thing that actually really sold me on this book wasn't the setting or how perfect it was for the vlog, not if I'm really really honest. The thing that got me was this tiny line on the back where it says Leeds in the 1970s is a place fraught with danger for young women like Jude for her best friend Nell and Janice across the road. And I don't know there just feels like something so very British and something so very familiar about that phrase for Jude and her friend and Janice across the road. I just it immediately made me want to pick up even more. Now although my particular mission was finished there was still one bookshop to visit. Partially genuinely because we were going to a restaurant over the road afterwards but partially just because we wanted to find more copies of Egyptian myths to make Jean sign. So we went to Toppings Booksellers, one of my favourite beautiful bookshops and as you can see here we were in fact successful in forcing Jean to write her name on very many books and I am proud of myself for this. Now as you can see Jill and I did then spend quite a lot of time in the children's section perusing things and taking note of titles to come back and buy later when we were both not completely poor and of course there was just a round of us being gorgeous gorgeous girls before we moved on to the fantasy section which is where most of us live. Honestly pretty much everybody in our little family loves the fantasy section even Harry who here found some John Scalzi books in the wild and was very excited about it. And despite the fact that that I did not go in there for anything I did in fact leave with something 
which uh, is the curse of toppings, let's be perfectly honest. I often find books and toppings that I had no intention to purchase and then when walking in the door they're just sitting there and they're shiny and quite a lot of them are signed. And that was, no word of a lie, what made me pick up this book. This is of course The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I have a proof of this book which I have read and uh, clearly absolutely adored more on that and a tops and bottoms coming to you soon but I had told myself that I was just going to wait. I was going to wait and get to the paperback. I was not going to commit hardback and then there it was and it was shiny and it was spoiled and it was a signed first edition, just hammed. And it's mine now and I'm not even that sad about it. Well, I mean, I'm just a little bit sad about it. My wallet's just a little bit sad about it, but here it is. I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys anything about this book beyond the fact that it is a new and extremely popular Dark Academia. I am kind of upset about the must read to TikTok sensation being on the front of it, not going to lie. In short, it is about a group of magicians who are petitioning to join the Alexandrian Society, which is a society which protects all knowledge uh, of magic and everything else for humanity and uh, the dodgy things that happen therein. It's extremely pretentious but very much in the same way as The Secret History is which of course we know worked for me very well. So that was it in terms of our little book crawl and my book quest which has of course been fulfilled but there are seeing as we're hauling books a couple of books that have made their way onto my desk that I wanted to quickly tell you about and the reason for that is that this is probably going to be my last big book haul of the year. The last time I did this was in 2020 when I actually did it for the majority of the year. I think it was like nine months before I bought any books and I think I definitely still hauled some books during that period that were like Christmas and birthday gifts or things from publishers but apart from that I don't plan on buying anything else this year. Three or four other pre-orders that I put in like closer to the start of the year that I'm still gonna let just fulfill themselves. But yeah, this this is it. What you see here is the last of the massive book hauling for this year. Don't worry because there will still be massive unhauling for this year which I know is really what you're here for. Anyway, all of that said, back to the warehouse issue that Waterstones are currently having. As I have said in other videos, I have massively cut down this year on pre-ordering books and I am only pre-ordering books that I've either had a proof and I know that I absolutely loved or they're coming from really, really trusted authors. And that was the case for this one. This was a sequel that I was absolutely dying, dying to get my hands on. When I got an email from Waterstones to tell me that my pre-order was not only not going to come in time but they couldn't tell me when it was going to come but it was still guaranteed. <laughs> and it just so happened that I must have manifested it that day on our book shopping trip because I was so salty about it that the next day it just arrived. Why is it so freaking dark in here? Better. Okay. So the book that I am talking about is of course the Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. This is the sequel to The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell, which is just one of my favourite thrillers in the entire world. And yes, guys, yes, I promise the top 10 thrillers video is coming, even though it will absolutely contain some thrillers that you guys will have heard of previously, will have heard me talk about a lot. I am going to do the top 10 thrillers video for you because you have wanted it for such a long time. Can't tell you how happy I am that there is a sequel, although, you know, I am salty that I am not going to be starting it now until uh, next week with Jean. <laughs> next one on this little stack on my desk, we have The Gilded Ones by Nemea Forna. This is another one with beautiful spread edges. This is just a stunning cover. This is a YA fantasy and it was a gift from the lovely Jo. Thank you so much for sending this one my way. So I don't know too much about this one. I had seen the cover quite a lot on social media but I don't read very much YA fantasy at all these days. Then I was doing sprints for Mixtapeathon with Victoria. This seems to be a theme on my channel, Victoria making me get books. But Victoria was finishing this book on sprints and she was just so utterly blown away by it and she she sold it to me so I immediately put it on my wish list so I can't thank you Joe enough for sending it along so quickly. This one follows Dika who is on her way to her village's blood ceremony. In this ceremony girls who turn a certain age, I'm going to assume 16 but don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure, are bled and if their blood runs 
red they are fine they are normal but if their blood runs gold they are cast out of the village as demons those demon girls are all sent to join the ranks of an army of near immortals which apparently doesn't according to victoria mean any of the normal perks that you would think from immortals now this one is the first in a series and so in this one i believe that dika just actually goes to the capital city where she is going to train to fight i don't think this is the whole story the sequel looks like this and i just oh. i'm so hoping that i love this one as much as victoria did but i will be sure to report back and let you know and then finally i have the autobiography of my mother by jamaica kincaid picador classics have been reprinting these absolutely stunning editions of jamaica kincaid's work and so i decided to pick this one up from her i've never read anything from her before and this seems like a good place to start the back of this book says willa claudette richardson is recalling the last 70 years of her life and so she must begin with her birth and the accompanying death of her mother what follows are willa's visceral recollections of the lonely unsettled life that follows the trauma of her arrival including memories of her distant father unfulfilling affairs and of a husband she is incapable of loving and one of Kincaid's most powerful statements on the struggle for identity and independence against a hostile backdrop of sexism and colonialism and this one starts with the most haunting first couple of lines it says my mother died at the moment I was born and so for my whole life there was nothing standing between myself and eternity at my back was always a bleak black wind oh i hope that everything that i have heard about jamaica kincaid's like fierce writing really holds true for the rest of this book because if that first line is anything to go by then this entire like 189 pages i think is going to be an absolute gut punch and i am ready for it so that's it you guys i hope that you enjoyed coming along on this little book buying expedition with me and that you enjoyed this kind of different book haul format i really enjoy bringing you in these little book buying days out with me so i hope that you like it just as much and yeah that was it guys that was the last book haul of the year i'm sorry that i didn't prepare you more for this if it came as a shock i i, I will give you a hug but it's okay we're, we're gonna get through this trying time together so as always guys if you have read any of the books that i've talked about here today please let me know your opinions about them down in the comments did you like them did you not like them tell me everything i hope that you are excited for my little vlog if you have made it this far into the video drop me the little storm cloud emoji to let me know that you're here and you've suffered through the scottish weather with me don't forget to check out my link for Anna Louisa down in the description below to get yourself something significantly more shinier than this Scottish day. Remember you get a cheeky little discount from shopping from my link. If you are new here and you have liked this video hit subscribe and then you get to see that vlog when it eventually happens and I will speak to all of you soon guys. Bye! I'm not gonna lie guys I'm actually really excited to put these books away today. I know I know quell shock but it's uh it's because I'm sick of listening to the sound of my own voice. Talked for like an hour. I'm, I'm over it. Go shelve books in silence. Thank you.